What is your name, Lord? We greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. In reverence to the Word of God, I'd like to invite those who can to stand up in Revelations. Seven, chapter 7 verse 9 Revelation 7 verse 9 and also verse 14 it says the following after these things, I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands. Now verse 14. And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Lord, we thank you for you and this moment of fellowship and ask that in your word you may bless your people and your church. We pray in the, holy, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. <coughs> Revelation of Jesus Christ that he gave to show to his servants the things that are soon to take place. And Jesus himself said the following, Blessed are the ones who read and the ones who hear the words of this prophecy and wait for it, for the things that are written in it, because the time, the time is near. So the book of Revelations was, was prepared for this moment. When we look into the past in the Old Testament, in the last chapters of Daniel, he uh, had a vision uh, of how uh, the end of days were going to be, and he was very uh, troubled and anguished. And the Lord told him that, told him, Daniel, these revelations for this moment are are sealed. This book is sealed. And when we come to the book of Revelations, the word says that there was no one on heaven or on earth to un undone and break the this, this seal. But then a, that brother saw that there was a lamb that was the only one who was worthy of breaking the seal and uh, open up the books. And he was showing that in the Old Testament, when he, Daniel was in Babylon, uh, he was uh, in this revelation. He he found out that this book, th those revelations, are for the time that we are living today. That's why it says uh, revelations of Jesus Christ. So in, through His Spirit, He has revealed the prophetic moment that you and I are living in our days. We are living the last days of the church here on this planet of Earth. And the word of the, the Lord says, my brethren, that the Apostle John, he was taken to heaven. He had a vision. And in heaven, he contemplated. He was able to see everything that God had prepared for his people and for his church. And after seeing all those things, the seven letters that were written towards the seven church and the Lord called him to go up to contemplate because God wanted to show to him and to give him an experience that he had never had throughout his life. What his eye had never seen and his ear had, ear had never heard and had never come up to his heart. The Lord at this moment was showing to him and there was things that it was reserved for the ones who loved the Lord. The ones who have a commitment with the Lord, the ones who have accepted the Lord as their only insufficient Savior. And the verse that we just read here it speaks of a multitude, a crowd of all the peoples, tongues, uh, tribes, and nations, and all this in this crowd. They were before the 
throne of God. And sometimes we think, oh, it's a privilege for me to present before the throne of uh, royalty uh, here on earth. In England, King Charles right now, right? There are a few people that have, that have a chance to have access to him to present themselves before the king. And people sometimes get even emotional about it. Now I'm before a king. But now, can you imagine that you have the opportunity to present yourself before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? And that's your destination. That's the project that God has for your life. That one day you will present yourself before the throne of the majestic King the, the, for a kingdom that is not of this world, but an eternal kingdom, a kingdom that never ends that's everlasting that has no end a kingdom where there is no pain no there's no crying or uh, shouting so my bread there there were there was this crowd of all the tribes peoples and tongues they were before the throne of the Lord but also before the lamb so now why before the lamb because the lamb was the reason why they were there because without the Lamb, they could not have been able to present themselves before God and be in that place and before His face and in front of His throne. And which Lamb is this? Is a Lamb that was killed before the foundation of the world. The Lamb that delivered Isaac, uh, delivered Isaac from death. Is the Lamb that John the Baptist when he was preaching on the desert of Judea, he pointed to him and said, he didn't say, there is, he, he said, is there elsewhere. He said, here is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, showing that God was present. And one of the names of this Lamb is Emmanuel, which means God with us. And Christ in us is hope of victory, hope of glory, and hope of the eternity. And that's what they were enjoying at that moment, of that earthly hope. Now, because of that hope, because of they placed their life and their trust and their faith on the Lamb, now they could have the privilege of being and participating on that feast. Because they're that was a, a, fast, a feast that was taking place and there was a celebration taking place there. And we are beginning to study now the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation. Uh, actually, the book of Song of Solomon. And, and at the end of the verse, he said, Eat and drink abundantly, O my loved one. It was a moment of feast and celebration, jubilation. And that's what was happening here. It was before the throne and before the Lamb. And I even didn't say uh, the name of the Lamb, but everyone knows the name of the Lamb. Who is the Lamb? Jesus. He is the Lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world. So then he said, but he was able to observe. He saw the throne, right? The throne of God. He saw the Lamb. The reason why he was able to get there and be in that place. But he also looked and saw, observed something interesting. Maybe I would not have observed, but he did. Because the Lord he revealed to him. And what did he see? He saw that this crowd, the entire crowd, without exception, it didn't matter their nationality, um, from what tribe they came from or the, of the color of their eyes, from what country they, they proceeded from, because there were people from every place, from every corner of the world, from every tribe, every nation, every, every uh, people, every tongue. He was able to see their garments. Interesting this, right? Why did he observe the garments? And why did he register here on, on the Bible the garments? And when we speak about uh, and this, 
and they were dressed up. Mm -hmm. So what uh, the garments is a dress, right? It's something that you dress, dress up. So imagine when you see an army, they are dressed up. Their garments, they are all, they are all equal, the same. There is no different garment from one another, because the garments to take men to eternity needs to be white. He needs to be white. Remember the feast uh, that people have been invited for in, in Matthew, one of the parables. When the king entered the feast, there was someone that was not properly dressed up. So his garments were different from the other garments. He was identified by his garments. He was denounced by his garments. And because he, was, he did not have the same garments as the other guests, he was taken out of the place. And what is the meaning of this? The Bible says that the garment was white. White speaks of holiness, of sanctification, without which no one, no one, no one, no one will see God. Without sanctification, no one will see God. And showing here as well that salvation is not by, uh, is not through works. And that if you're saved once, you're saved forever. Because salvation is an act and process. So he was able to see that there he, they were wearing white garments. So in order to get to that place, my brother and sister, in order for you to present yourself before God, your garment needs to be white. And I have to be dressed up in the same way as my brethren. My garment cannot be different. Here in this place, everybody's dressed up in a different way, but not in heaven. In heaven, everybody's going to dress up in the same way. The garments of salvation. Adam and Eve, they sinned, they made a mistake, they disobeyed the Lord, and a, a garment was provided for them. What did, what did God do? They provided a garment for themselves, but God changed their garments. And what God wants to do to you and I, He wants to exchange your garments. He wants to give garments of praise instead of uh, garments of uh, um, anguished soul on eyes of joy or instead of eyes of tears. He wants to give a blessing of salvation to each one of us. This garment was provided by God through the blood of our, Savior, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and only through Him they can be whited out as we are going to see soon, up, soon after on the verses. So they were dressed up with white garments so they sanctified themselves. What is to be holy is to be set apart. They do not contaminate themselves, do not get corrupted. They preserve themselves. They, they took care of their garment, they took care of their salvation. Because salvation is individual. If I believe, I will be saved. If I don't believe, I'm not going to be saved. If I sanctify myself, I will, I will be saved. If I don't sanctify myself in the blood of Jesus, I will not be saved. That doesn't matter if I say, Lord, Lord, I'm preaching the word of God, but if I'm not in sanctification to the, God, to the Lord. But besides those garments, this dress, they also, uh, in their hands, palms, palm leaves. Palm leaves are, are leaves from palm trees. And uh, palm leaves, when we look at it, we'll remember the Feast of the Tabernacles. The Jewish people, when when they when they entered into Jer Jerusalem, would they would come with uh, palm leaves in their hands. There is an episode very interesting in Matthew where, about the triumphant entrance of Jesus in Jerusalem. When he was entering with the crowd in Jerusalem, the Bible says, my brethren, that the crowd that was there with Jesus, following Jesus to enter into Jerusalem, 
they all had palm leaves in their hands and they were singing Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one that, can, that comes in the name of the Lord. So the palm leaves is related to victory. So the people that were here and there in that place, they were victorious. They have been victorious. And the Bible says, my brethren, to you, to me, to each one of us, that we are more than victorious in the one that uh, that loved us. Because I know that death of life and the principalities or past and the future and the height and depth would separate me from the love of God that is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So these men and women, that crowd, they had a commitment with the Lord. And their commitment with their Lord was to enter into Jerusalem to praise and glorify the King of Kings and Lord of the Lords. And the commitment of our church, when I say our church, I don't, I'm not talking about denomination, I'm talking about the faithful church, the church of Jesus Christ, is to follow, is to be with Him in this new Jerusalem, this new heaven and this new earth, proclaiming the victory through the blood of Jesus in the Lamb, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And verse 14 says the following. And I said to him, Sir, you know, so where they are, where they come from. So the servant of the Lord says, Sir, you know, and there was an answer. These are the ones that came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and white, made them white in the blood of the Lamb. It's showing this prophetic moment in which we were Leaving. The Bible says that in those days, if those days were not shortened, no soul would be saved. But because of the love of, of the Lord to us in those days, the, the days are going to be shortened. The church is not going to go through great tribulation because the Lord is going to have mercy on us. The church is not going to go through this moment because as we see in the book of Song of Solomon, I have already come down to my garden. I already collected my myrrh, so the suf suffering is going to be taken away. I already drank my wine, my milk, I ate. So now it's showing that before this period of great tribulation, of great suffering, sometimes you think that we are here in great suffering. But the great suffering is, is to come. But for you, the word says, the ones who fear my name, the Son of Justice will be rising up. We are not going to go through this. And the word says, the following my brethren, and they came. They came because they washed, they washed the, their garments. Oh, I received a garment, the garments of salvation. No, I need to keep it clean in order for me to keep it clean, I need to wash it. And where am I going to wash it? It is written here. Wash on the blood of the Lamb. Because only Jesus can forgive sin. Only Jesus. is the only one that has power to forgive sin. So I need to be cleansing myself every day because I constantly sin. Everyone has sinned. And here is the exercise of sanctification. It's a process. Salvation is an act and, is, and also is a process. Their garment, their garments, they washed their garments and whited them out in the blood of the Lamb. So uh, to wash and made them white is to plead for the blood of Jesus in order for him to forgive our sins and wipe them out. So it's to remain in sanctification through the uh, means of grace that the church know fasting, prayer, the word of God, the blood of Jesus, the Holy Spirit that give us full fellowship with God. And this is the blessing that the Lord has for me, for you, my brother, to each one of us. The desire of the Lord is that everyone be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. The word is being preached for this moment in which we are living. Because the desire of the Lord is no one be lost that we all may be saved. But in order for this to take place, we need to make a definition every day in the presence of the Lord. I don't think that you are saved, that, that you have been saved once, now you're saved forever. 
This doesn't exist. If you believe, you will be. If you don't believe, you have been condemned already. <coughs> Amen. That's the blessing the Lord has for your life. And the Lord was showing tonight a woman, a sister. She has a, a lamp, and this lamp has oil. And we know here very well the parable of the ten virgins. But this woman doesn't have an extra reservoir with oil. And the ones who know the parable of the ten virgins know what happened to the five virgins that did not have a reservoir with actual oil. What happened? They did not participate on the feast. So the Lord is alerting this woman tonight because the Lord loves her and the desire of the Lord that she goes to the eternity. There is still time. Get ready. Be ready for the moment of the rapture. The rapture is going to take place in the twinkling of an eye. It's like a lightning that comes from the east and she appears on the west. When you realize you have already been, have already gone, we need to have our waist girded and our lamps need to be lit. And the Lord was already showing a couple. This couple came to the church and they came to praise the Lord for victory. The Lord has given to their lives. And the Lord was showing to them that during the period of the service, that this doctrine that they have asked the Lord, the Lord has already uh, sent this doctrine to them. And that at any moment, they're going to receive an answer in their house. But what is interesting regarding this gift is the following, that this couple, before they received the gift, they already came here to glorify the Lord. You know what is the name of this? What is the name of this? Faith. Faith. Faith is a firm foundation of the things that you cannot see, but the tr the proof of the things that are waiting for. Blessed be in the Lord. They receive the blessing because they have already had faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the Lord well, I was was always sh also showing another sister that has a garden. I'm going to summarize the gift. A sister, somebody in the church here, that for a long time has served the Lord and has care for the things of the Lord but is not being used in spiritual gifts and that in her does she has this desire to be used in spiritually in spiritual gifts and she has asked so many times the Lord and never received an answer from the Lord regarding the situation that she was already thinking that it was not possible for her to be used but the Lord was showing that from this day forward this issue was going to be used in spiritual gift blessed be the Lord my brother and sister it is God's time. The Bible says, knock and knock and the door will be open. You knock and knock and today is giving you an answer to your life, using you in spiritual gifts. Amen. Let's sing a song.
Oh, it's a good. Oh, the church will stand up. What is your name, Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Your holy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. We praise the Lord. We thank you. We're thankful for this moment of fellowship. We pray for your people, for your church. The visitors are, are in your sanctuary and that upon each one of them, your Holy Spirit may rest and that you may open their eyes and give to them a personal experience with you and prepare each one of us for the rapture of the church. Give us a week of victories and peace and victories and experiences. We pray to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. In your name we say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and good and eternal Father and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit may be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. The brother and sister that need a prayer, clarification regarding the gifts and the word, raise your hand and we want to give you the proper assistance. I'd like to invite the church that today is a little hot. But during the week, we're going to fix it. One of our ACs broke.